Good morning, everyone. It is so great to see all of you. Just letting you up. There we go. Awesome. Good morning. So grateful to be with you all today on this All Saints Day. Um, you guys know the drill, but for those of you who maybe are new, I'm just going to give you a little bit of the lay of the land. So the great thing about Zoom is that um, you're able to participate from home. Um, we ask that you um, stay muted um, as you read and sing along with us. Uh, that way you don't distract from those who are offering the service, but you can sing to your heart's content and nobody will really hear you, which is kind of nice. Um, if you're having any technical issues, you can of course reach out to me in the chat and I'll do my best to help you. Um, in about five minutes, I'll go ahead and put the bulletin in the chat as well. That way you have that available to you if you're not getting it um, in your emails. Please let us know if um, there's something we can do to help with that. Um, there'll be a couple opportunities for you to unmute yourself. That way you can participate in the service. One being um, the breakout room. So during the passing of the piece, I will break everybody up into little mini chat rooms with a member of the clergy. Um, for a period of time. So at that, that point you can unmute yourself and, and, and speak out. And at the end of the service, we have an opportunity for a little more casual conversation with our coffee hour. So we invite you to stay on the meeting. We'll stop the YouTube live stream and then just have our a little chat there. If you are watching us on YouTube, uh, please pop into the comments and let us know that you're here. It's just nice to know who's watching and from where. And we're so grateful you're here with us this morning. And with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Connie. Thanks so much. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, one of my favorite days of the year. This is All Saints Day. And to begin, I'd like to read a reflection that was written by our former Bishop Carol Gallagher um, the day before yesterday. So just put yourselves in, God, yourselves in God's presence and let us listen. A wondrous creator who renews our world, you wrap the wide earth in snow blankets sending us indoors to tell our ancient stories, to remember those who taught us to love. Make us a blessing in our time, dear Lord. Thousands upon thousands have perished, unknown to us and always your beloved. Their families grieve and ache for their loss and we cannot comfort them as we want to. Make us a blessing in our time, dear Lord. We raise the names of the saints who have passed. We remember their touch, their laughter, their tears. 
We hold them close, though they are gone, giving great thanks for their time on this island. Make us a blessing in our time, dear Lord. The turmoil of our world can overwhelm us, yet saints known and unknown lead the way. They teach us to sing and pray in dark days and know the embrace of your loving arms. Make us a blessing in our time, dear Lord. Amen. And now let us raise our voices in praise and honor to God. <clears throat> For all the saints, verses 1, 4, 6, 7, and 8. <clears throat> Go lay down. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you our thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
you are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord, give us grace so to follow thy blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that thou hast prepared for those who unveinedly love thee. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from Revelation. I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the lamb robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Please join me in saying Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. A reading from the book of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Touch him and 
and say that we love Him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. And Jesus saw the crowds. He went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Today we celebrate the Feast of All Saints, one of the principal feasts in the life of the church. All Saints is a day when we recall the enduring beauty and diversity of the faithful, both living and departed. And when we profess that, somehow we are mysteriously bound together with them across time and space and context by virtue of our common spiritual heritage and faith in Jesus the Christ. All Saints, like any good mystery, is generative. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of symbols, of miracles, of wonders, of lives. Examples are too many to count. For some, reflecting on all saints is like reflecting upon a family filled with different personalities, each living their respective lives and callings, and yet bound by shared histories, customs, and relationships. For others, all saints is like a patchwork quilt fashioned from unique swatches carefully stitched together over time, yielding an amazingly singular source of warmth and comfort and home. For still others, All Saints is like a team comprised of participants from different backgrounds, times, ages, and races who play their roles in creating community for a common purpose. None of these images is complete. Over time and season each and so many others, bears fruit to be savored and appreciated. Each helps us turn the prism, as it were, to glimpse a different angle, a different color of this mystery. Each shows us, calls us more deeply into the reality of being knit together with the whole company of the faithful. Even those who worship God on another shore and in a different way, we are called to promote the Christian value, each inseparable from the other, of loving God and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Because it really is one commandment not to, we have to do both. All Saints Day is full of meaning in lots of different ways because it's a day that's saturated with stories, begging to be dusted off and read and reread. My favorite book as a kid in third grade was Butler's Lives of the Saints. I read the stories of faith, some incredible and outlandish, some very relevant, but all contain a truth. We need these stories. My friend Dave Mann says, creation is made of atoms, but it's held together by stories. And so are the saints. Quite a few of the saints confronted institutional power. Catherine of Siena is my favorite. She told the Pope, looking for profit on the back of the poor is against Christ. 
and she advocated for transparency. And not to forget the Revelation reading we have for today, the hero of the book of Revelation is the lamb, unexpected and contrary to the world's understanding of power. The lamb governs with mercy and justice and care. Power governs with cruelty and self-interest and indifference. This, like the lives of the saints, challenge the notion that power is the most important thing. As Christians, we must say that power is not the way to go. Mercy and justice are our North Star. They are meant to guide the Christian person in the way of Jesus of Nazareth. All of these stories are chock full of curious and complex characters, some of them likable, some of them unlikable. But no matter, they've been blinded or startled or warmed or provoked by God's grace, each noteworthy in their own regard. And yet, for all their diversity, these stories are sheltered under the same roof, protected by the same walls, confirmed and strengthened by the same divine love. Over the centuries, the church has identified the lives of the saints as tangible expressions of the Beatitudes, of those who hunger and thirst for justice, for those bodies who are poor of spirit, who mourn, who pursue peace. The Sermon on the Mount is one of the most, if not the most scrutinized of Jesus' teachings, mostly because it's his longest sustained discourse in the New Testament. Individuals from every background have poured over the sermon's words and phrases, searching for moral guidance, scholarly revelation, and spiritual insight for their lives of faith. Much ink has been spilled in efforts to take every bit of nuance and significance and profundity from Jesus' words. Yet for every volume penned, there are four besides. For every individual interpretation, there are a million wonderings. Though Jesus uttered these words millennia ago, they still demand our attention and prayers to be digested steadily and slowly as we seek the ways God would have us to go. But if we chew long enough, carry this or that statement from Jesus to what appears its logical conclusion, we are bound to find some less than appetizing parts, some bits that are tough to swallow, some things that we find troubling uh, and or difficult. But that is Jesus. Jesus challenges. If you're not challenged by these words, I would submit, you haven't entered into them because they challenge the saint and the sinner alike. They challenge me. One of the challenges in sitting with the list of the Beatitudes, and there are many, is that they can quickly embarrass our well-intentioned pursuits of holiness. For those of us who aren't sufficiently poor or persecuted or working to broker peace, Jesus' teachings can leave us stuck between the rock of apathy and the hard place of shame. Apathy at our obvious inability to climb that moral mountain of faith, therefore giving up or shame at our repeated failure for not quite getting it right. Both of these responses therefore kind of cultivate resentment. Resentment maybe toward the Beatitudes themselves, even res resentment for those who were able or are able to live in accord with them. Wherever the resentment might fall, either on Jesus' teaching or on those who seem to follow it to a T, we can often be left in a frustrating place. What to do with this seemingly impossible, inaccessible morality on which so much moral importance is placed? The question is not lost on the church. Throughout history, numerous theologians, pastors, and spiritual writers have bumped against it and continue to do so. Martin Luther, for instance, named the Beatitudes as a measuring stick of sin revealing just how far each has fallen short of God's glory and how Jesus beautifully attains what us earthbound folks cannot. Luther is just one. There are others who have emphasized the almost infinite distance between this new law and those of us who are to be shaped by it. While many hold the position that the Beatitudes are too heavenly to be of earthly good, there are others who have seen them as Jesus' answer to the age-old question, 
of what constitutes human fulfillment. Jesus is not after judgment and condemnation as much as Jesus is squarely on the side of flourishing and compassion. The Beatitudes ought to be read as not only about moral obligation, but as signposts of true happiness. In that way, they show our paths as a people of faith, guiding us as we go about our days. The Beatitudes are the Christian equivalent of the Ten Commandments. Here are the things that make you happy, Jesus says. Take them in. Let them instill hope and enliven and direct your steps as they have done for countless before you. Trust that the Holy Spirit will guide you on the way. This is precisely what we see over and over in the lives of the saints. We see individuals in their humanity who sought the narrow path of poverty, meekness, mercy, and purity instead of riches, egoism, cruelty, and corruption. And we name them as deeply fulfilled, these saints, as truly happy, opening up this well-worn narrow way in the forest of debilitating grief or agonizing doubt or social unrest. This is simply another way of saying that what is so extraordinary about the saints is the ways in which their ordinary ordinary lives unfolded, paced by grace-filled page. The saints are those for whom God's love has seeped into the cracks and crevices of the human condition to encourage new and different ways of seeing themselves and the world and God. Telling the saints stories are ways not to belittle our own piety or moral judgments, but to repeatedly remind ourselves of how God has worked with and will continue to work with generation after generation in the church for the fulfilling and elevating of humanity. It is a deep and beautiful mystery that this day we count ourselves members of this great family of faith. We are all saints, as St. Paul reminds us. It is a deep and beautiful mystery that we are invited to locate our stories among those of martyrs and confessors from millennia past and to declare boldly the same thread of love running through them all. Our prayer is that we receive that as a gift this day, and that we be given grace to see the extraordinary myths of the saints as lessons in Christian faith, seeing them as honest examples of God at work in our midst and encouragement for the tough task of living this side of heaven, promoting mercy and justice. Jesus tells us, and the saints show us, it can be done. Amen. Now the Nicene Creed, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and for the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers today uh, are not included in your bulletin. We receive these late in the week. 
and they're from the National Church. And because they're so relevant for today, uh, we're going to pray them. Uh, for those of you who cannot see the screen, the response is, guide us in truth and love. Let us pray. Loving God, creator of this world, who is the source of our wisdom and understanding, watch over this nation during this time of election. Help us to see how our faith informs our principles and actions. God, our creator, guide us in truth and love. We give thanks for the right to vote. Help us to hold this privilege and responsibility with the care and awareness it merits, realizing that our vote matters and that it is an act of faith. God, our creator. In truth and love. Guide us through this election as a nation, state, and community as we vote for people to do work on our behalf and on behalf of our communities. Help us to vote for people and ballot initiatives that will better our community and our world so that it may reflect the values Christ taught us. God, our creator. Guide us in truth and love. Help us create communities that will build your kingdom here on earth, communities that will protect the poor, stand up for the vulnerable, advocate for those who are not seen and heard and listen to everyone's voice. God, our creator. Guide us in truth and love. We pray for this nation that is deeply divided. May we come together for the common good and do as you have called us to do to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you through creation. God, our creator, guide us in truth and love. Help us to act out of love, mercy, and justice rather than out of arrogance or fear. God, our creator, guide us in truth and love. Lord, continue to guide us as we work for the welfare of this world we pray for places that are torn by violence, that they may know peace. God, our creator. Guide us in truth and love. We pray for communities who are struggling with inequality, unrest, and fear. And let us now, if you have someone that you would like to lift up, unmute yourself and call out their name, either silently or aloud, for those that we are praying for. For refugees everywhere. Rhonda. Those who are incarcerated under supervision, recovering and not recovering from drug and alcohol addiction. Joshua. For all the families and people who are affected by COVID, for those who are waiting for healing and for those who mourn. May we all work toward reconciliation with one another and with God. God, our creator, guide, guide us in truth and love. love. Help us to listen in love, work together in peace, and collaborate with one another as we seek the betterment of our community and world. God, our creator, guide, guide us in truth and love. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen.
<laughs> may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless <laughs> the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I'm very pleased to say today that we have two offertory numbers, and the first one is a sharing by Addison and Adric Rutherford as they play. So please listen to the chorus from Judas Maccabeus. <laughs> Thank you. That was lovely. And now, one more number by the team of singers. And uh, I, this time, Rob is going to be floating at the bottom of your screen. Please enjoy. Uh, you can sing along with this song. It's called Needed Time. And I thought it was appropriate for the time that we're in. Thank you. 
Wonderful. Um, just wanted to reiterate how grateful I am to um, Don and Rob and also um, to Allison and Adric. That was very special. Thank you so much to everyone. Um, we have a few announcements before we begin. And I think first I will kick it over. Was it Sharon? Uh, let's see. Carol Sherrick. Oh, sorry. Carol. Carol Sherrick. Carol Sherrick, Sharon Everson. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to, I'm chair of the Community and World Concerns Committee. And what we do is distribute our church's outreach money to communities, uh, community and world organizations that benefit those uh, Greg was talking about in the Beatitudes today. Um, our St. Nicholas Fair raises money for all this, and it is going online this year due to the pandemic, of course, and selling arts and crafts, uh, beautiful things. And it's going to be held December 5th and 6th online. The exact times and details are to be determined and will be published soon. We will also be raffling a beautiful quilt that Marty Sanders has donated once again. And the ticket sales for that will start on November 11th. And the details of that are also to be determined and um, published soon. And there will be wonderful carvings from Jack Olson and knitwear from Amy Ross. Bob Fearington's uh, Christmas decor will also be sold and some other things. And if you look on the church announcements, uh, there's a little announcement about it down there that if you have things you want to sell, homemade art or crafts, that you can contact Amy Ross. Her contact information is there in the announcement. And I hope if you aren't able to purchase anything at the ferry, you will make a donation to this effort to help um, feed and house and clothe and give medical care to all those people in the community and world who need it. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, Vicki. Yes, uh, this afternoon we're all invited to attend a national service for healing and wholeness that presiding Bishop Curry will be officiating at. It's at 2 p.m. our time. You access the service by going to the Episcopal Church website of episcopalchurch.org. And right there on the homepage of the website is a link that will take you to the service and whatnot. So that's 2 p.m. our time today. And then uh, a reminder for everyone, it's in your service bulletin, but Father Clark is going to be leading an absolutely incredible Thursday evening Bible study starting January the 7th that tells us about the people who shaped the Episcopal Church as we know it today, including 17 people who are now considered to be saints of the Episcopal Church. So if this is something that would interest you, and I think most of us, even lifelong Episcopalians, know very little about the people that really established our church as we know it today, I encourage you to attend this study. Any questions that you have, please feel free to get in touch with Father Clark or me, and my email address is terracecoast at aol.com. That's what I'm here for, is to answer any questions you have about activities at St. James. Thanks. Oh, thank you so much, Vicki. That's wonderful. Um, and finally, just a little update on stewardship. Our stewardship campaign is live. Pledge cards are out. Um, and I would just like to direct you to the St. James website. Um, even though we haven't been in person, we've been busy behind the scenes and there's a new website. So I encourage you to check it out. And at the top is also just a little reminder about the stewardship campaign. So stjamesbozeman.org. Um, if you have questions about stewardship, please reach out to the chair of the committee, Chantel, or any member of the staff. 
And then with that, I believe we are good for the breakout rooms, correct? Yes, I have put the link for the donor box in the chat room. If you do choose to give this way, otherwise we just thank you for your continued support of St. James. The office is open every day and mail is picked up every day. So please don't hesitate to send in your checks, your pledge cards, um, or do it online. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. All right, with that, I'm going to open up our breakout rooms for the passing of the peace, as well as birthdays and anniversaries. Um, you'll automatically get entered in with a member of the clergy. Um, we have nine minutes, so here we go. Last time. And just a few of you, I'm just going to go ahead and manually add you in. So just give me just a second. And if you're joining us via YouTube, so grateful that you're here with us. I um, invite you to let us know that you're here in the comments. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my screen. And we will be back in about eight minutes and 15 seconds to be exact.
All right, looks like we are all back. Ah, Clark, would you lead us? Hmm. Greg, would you? Sure, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we Forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 Let us now sing, I sing a song of the saints of God. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.